from aged libraries whose many rows are filled with knowledge, mystery, and chilling supernatural activity, to battlefield landmarks stalked by the restless ghosts of soldiers killed in action centuries past. Are you prepared to brave our second list of picks for some of the most haunted places in Pennsylvania? Number 5. Sacks Covered Bridge Sachs Covered Bridge, which spans Marsh Creek just out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, is a 100-foot town trust sheltered crossing that's renowned as one of the state's few remaining town trust bridges around, and that, through the American Civil War, was utilized by both Confederate and Union forces during the Battle of Gettysburg and in its wake. Historically, in 1852, this bridge was first constructed under David Stoner, with its design handled under Ithiel Town, who is actually recognized among the first generation of professional architects in the country. On July 1st of 1863, the bridge would be crossed by two brigades of the 1st Corps of the Union Army as they made their way to Gettysburg. Around the same time, it would also accommodate the 3rd Corps en route to the Black Horse Tavern, and four days later, General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia would utilize the crossing in their retreat following a Union victory in Gettysburg. In 1938, Sachs would be designated as Pennsylvania's most historic bridge. In 1968, the crossing would be closed to vehicular traffic, and on June 19th of 1996, amidst pre-running restorations, a flash flood would result in significant damage to the site, though funding for additional restorations was quickly amassed. And on July 21st of 1997, it was formally rededicated. Sachs Covered Bridge remains open into the present, offering stunning nature views, a wealth of history, and, according to long-standing local legend, a multitude of paranormal activity tied to those lost in the battle held so long ago. The most popular tales surrounding Sachs intertwine with history to tell of three Confederate soldiers who were executed on site. Some claim these soldiers were young, scared men who'd attempted to desert. Others, that they were Confederate spies clad in Union garb who were found out. And others still, that a darker scandal was at play, resulting in the three being hanged from the bridge's support beams, so that all passing Confederates might more fully appreciate their loss. To date, many crossing Sachs Covered Bridge after dark have reported encountering the ghosts of the three soldiers, dangling by the neck from the bridge, often writhing, choking, and gasping for the air they'll never truly breathe again. Also reported near Sachs are disembodied heads sighted flitting about, phantom wafts of cigar smoke, and the unnerving feelings of being followed, watched, or even of being tapped by a presence unseen. Number 4. The Devil's Den the Devil's Den, located off of the southern end of Hooks Ridge at the Gettysburg Battlefield in Pennsylvania, is a boulder-laden hill that was utilized by both infantry and artillery on the second day of the legendary 1863 Battle of Gettysburg during the American Civil War. Historically, the landmarks Little Round Top, Big Round Top, and the Devil's Den were formed an astounding 200 million years ago. And much, much more recently, through the mid-19th century, the area was believed to be home to a giant snake dubbed the Devil that supposedly slithered amongst the expanse's darkest crevices, resulting in its ominous moniker. Through the Battle of Gettysburg, which was fought from July 1st to 3rd of 1863, the Devil's Den would host some of the fight's most brutal combat, and alone would play witness to around 821 Union and a crippling 1,815 Confederate casualties. In 1864, the Gettysburg Battlefield Memorial Association was established in an effort to preserve the area for the public, and from this time and onward, the Devil's Den has acted as an integral part of the provided tourist site. In the present, Gettysburg National Cemetery and Gettysburg National Military Park remain open to the public and are maintained under the U.S. National Park Service as quite literally two of the country's most significant historical landmarks. Not surprisingly, the den has become a popular stop not just for tourists, but also for paranormal investigators, and its theorized inexplicable activity near is a result of the many who lost their lives in the battle held so many years past. With those braving its expanse, reporting extreme cold spots, the disembodied sounds of battle heard emanating from thin air, and frequent instances of cell phones or electronic equipment glitching out. 
One more famous tale tells of a motorist who was passing right near the den when he spotted two soldiers walking along the side of the road. When he stopped to ask if they needed help, thinking them actors, they informed him that they had a friend who was injured and required assistance. The incredulous man exited his vehicle and followed them into a nearby tree, where he found another soldier bearing a grievous chest wound propped up against it. Before the motorist could react, however, the scene faded away in the blink of an eye. A second famous story tells of a shoeless man who's been known to approach visitors offering helpful advice or directions. Tales of encounters with this strange manifestation, which is believed to be the entity of a Confederate Texan soldier, date back to the mid-1970s. Lastly, a phantom called the Ghost Rider has been known to materialize suddenly near the den, bringing with it the sounds of gunfire and shouting before vanishing just as quickly as it first appeared. Number 3. Harrisburg State Hospital Harrisburg State Hospital, or formerly the Pennsylvania State Lunatic Hospital, and located off of Cameron and McClay Streets in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, is a former medical campus recognized as the first public facility to welcome and house the disabled. Historically, construction of the main building of what was then called the Pennsylvania State Lunatic Hospital was completed in 1851 and would house its administration, staff, and patients all on site. An adjacent 130-acre farm would be utilized for work therapy while providing the hospital with fresh foods and livestock. And between the years of 1893 and 1912, the whole of the expanse was reconstructed. At its peak, the Penn State Lunatic Hospital would boast over 70 buildings stretched over a 1,000-acre campus. In 1921, the site would re-establish itself as Harrisburg State Hospital, and until the addition of newer structures through the 1930s, both female and male sides of the institution would mirror each other almost identically. Through the late 20th century, Harrisburg's patient populace would begin to dwindle, and on January 27th of 2006, the site would cease all operations. In the present, the hospital's campus has been reduced to 295 acres, which still contains over 50 buildings and holds space for a number of state agencies and offices. On a side note, this property is not open to the public, and while a number of urban explorers and daredevils have made their way into various abandoned buildings, dangers within said age structures are very real, so we ask our viewers not to follow suit. In addition to supernatural activity believed to be a result of the many who lived and died within its walls, the old asylum also boasts underground tunnels, a morgue, and a graveyard that's since been moved elsewhere, which, if we've learned anything in our studies, is an almost surefire way to awaken all sorts of really nasty things you probably don't want to awaken. The early cemetery on hospital grounds, which contained around 230 bodies, was removed during restorations in 1927. Disturbingly, it's unclear if all remains made it safely to the new yard. And into more recent times, several have reported run-ins with what are believed to be the restless spirits of those whose graves were desecrated, appearing seemingly confused as they search for their proper resting places. Reported across the whole of Harrisburg's campus are objects sighted moving on their own, shadowy figures that stalk the living, disembodied footsteps and screams heard from empty spaces, and strange knocking and scratching noises that emanate from within walls. Lastly, the hospital's most actively haunted areas are rumored to be its former morgue, basement, and tunnels, where many have told of watching blood-like stains appear on the floors out of nowhere, and of a constant sense of impending dread. Number 2. The Carnegie Library of Homestead The Carnegie Library of Homestead, located off of East 10th Avenue in Munhall, Pennsylvania, is a public library recognized as the sixth of such libraries in the country to be founded and commissioned under Andrew Carnegie, as the seventh to open its doors to the public, and is the third oldest Carnegie Library to continuously operate out of its original structure. Historically, this aged institution was first constructed in 1898 on an elevation overlooking the campus of Homestead Steelworks, which had previously played host to the 1892 labor strike in which Pinkerton agents battled against union workers. 
Despite its moniker, the Carnegie Library of Homestead wouldn't actually act as a branch of the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh, but rather as its own entity. While Andrew Carnegie would request alternative funding for his other projects, conversely, Homestead would be funded wholly off of his local plant operation, and following the 1901 closure of U.S. Steel, he would actually establish a trust to better support the facility. While the property would see a number of modernizations and renovations over its years, its three separate facilities, being its library, music venue, and gym, all contained under one roof, would remain the same. And through the 1920s and 30s, this latter association's swimming pool would actually be utilized by Olympians as a training grounds. In the present, the Carnegie Library of Homestead remains open to the public, offering a collection of over 34,000 pieces, its 1,047-seat music hall, and of course, its classic athletic club, a complete with heated pool. Long-standing local legends paint the whole of Homestead grounds as haunted by the spirits of those who loved it so in life that their souls remained after death, and those frequenting this weathered library have reported disembodied voices and footsteps, instances of books flying from shelves, and encounters with both shadowy manifestations and full-bodied entities in clothing spanning its many eras. Additionally, photographs taken in the music hall frequently feature half-formed silhouettes and strange hominid mists, and across the auditorium's many seats, several reoccurring phantoms have been spied spread about. In the aforementioned Homestead Strike of 1892, steelworkers would battle against the corrupt Henry Clay Frick, who sought to destroy the Union while retaining an oppression over his employees, and the ensuing confrontation would result in 16 deaths. The spirits of these workers have been sighted randomly amongst the library's rows, seemingly lost and looking unbearably out of place for moments before fading away. Another popular story tells of Robert E. Peebles, who was discovered deceased in the athletic club's swimming pool on November 28th of 1899, under what many deem or suspicious circumstances. Incidentally, into more recent times near the pool, many have reported phantom splashing and cries for help heard at all hours. Lastly, the ghost of Andrew Carnegie himself is said to remain on site and frequents the adult reading room, where many have told of books sighted floating about or of pages turning on their own, of sudden drops in temperature, and of phantom yawns, coughs, and whispers. Number 1. Fort Mifflin Fort Mifflin, also recognized as the Mud Island Fort, and originally as the Fort Island Battery, and located on Mud Island in the Delaware River just below Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, is a historic defense boasting the title of being the oldest active military base in the whole of the United States, and the only base that predates the Declaration of Independence itself. Historically, in 1771, while work was started on a fort on site, it would eventually grind to a halt due to lack of funding and guidance. In autumn of 1777, the British Army would bombard and occupy the defense through their conquest of Philadelphia. Until 1793, what remained of the fort would lie dormant and forgotten, after which a full reconstruction was issued. And following this reconstruction's completion, the defense was redesignated under the Army as Fort Mifflin. In honor of of Thomas Mifflin, a Continental Army officer and, in 1795, the first governor of an independent Pennsylvania. Proceeding the establishment of Fort Delaware in 1820, Fort Mifflin would be relegated to secondary status. Through the 19th century, encompassing lands would be drained and then filled, forming a landmass between the western bank of the Delaware and Mud Island. And during the Civil War, Union forces would utilize the aged defensive structure as a POW camp. Fort Mifflin would remain militarized until 1954, after which it would be left virtually abandoned. And in 1962, the expanse would be deeded under the federal government to the city of Philadelphia, who would in turn open it to the public. The fort remains open into the present, offering a range of annual events and touring options for the interested, and is actually officially still an active U.S. Army Corps of Engineers base. Chillingly, this weathered post would soldier through its heaviest assault during the American Revolution, a siege which left around 250 of the 406 to 450 garrisoned within dead or wounded. And it's believed this, coupled with countless other fatalities on and near sight, have left a lasting paranormal scar, with those braving the expanse reporting footsteps and voices heard from empty spaces, the disembodied sounds of a woman heard screaming, and encounters with apparitions in a range of clothing, including 
including those of soldiers, civilians, prisoners, and more. Several informal investigations of the fort's grounds have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and orbs and strange mists in photography, while other accounts tell of phantom wafts of gunpowder or of the smells of old foods, of spectral wafts of tobacco smoke when none should be present, and of the unnerving sensations of being watched, followed, or even of being grabbed by a presence unseen. Additionally, several ghostly troops have been spied tending their firearms or carrying out duties from lives long since lost, and these manifestations often appear so real that living nearby mistake them for actors before watching them vanish or walk straight through walls. By far the most famous ghost at Fort Mifflin is said to be that of the faceless man, who it's suspected is the restless soul of Union deserter William H. Howe, who was imprisoned on site in 1864 until his subsequent hanging later the same year. Since his execution, a faceless apparition thought to be Howe has been sighted wandering about, seemingly lost or confused, and has even been known to surprise and charge those who dare cross his path. Taking its brutal and fascinating history into account, and coupling it with such a chilling assortment of associated local legends and ghost stories, we felt Fort Mifflin was the perfect choice as this list's most haunted place in Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining us for our second list of picks for some of the most haunted places in Pennsylvania. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you next time.